Hey, Amanda, so sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. I just thought maybe I had missed something or. No, that was totally my fault. <laughs> Hi, Katie. All right, I was super late logging in, so my apologies. Um, oh, okay, I was like, I thought I had the wrong link. <laughs> no. Everyone's like texting me, I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. I lost half time. Um, so today I wanted to go over different Google systems that you can use um, free for your business and to help keep you organized, keep you on track. Um, that way, if you have any um, different parts of your business that you like to organize that you can't do in command, um, that you have available and free tools. Um, so if you don't already know, your KW email will function through Gmail. Um, and that is helpful because all of the Google systems are connected together. So if you have um, a spreadsheet that you want to make sure you have for um, a meeting and you put it on your Google Calendar, you can actually link it into that meeting. So you can click on, you get easy access to everything. Um, so you're going to be seeing a lot of my random crazy stuff. So I apologize in advance, but um, I'll go ahead and share my screen just so I can kind of show you. So um, I don't, do both of you use Gmail? Yeah, okay. So I won't spend a terrible amount of time just to briefly touch on it, just some organizational tips. Um, so you have obviously your mail, um, the little stars, if you star them as important, they are going to show up at the top. Um, you can actually separate groups of your um, emails to like important, and then everything else can filter into a second. So I get emails from like Morning Brew and Inman and just random people that I don't really care about, <laughs> where versus, you know, if I get agent email or an email from the division or, you know, something that's more important, I want it at the top. Um, so you can group your emails and how you do that is through your settings. Um, so you can absolutely do that um, just so you can, you know, if you have your clients information in there or Lori or your broker information, since Amanda, I know you have Buffy and Joanne um, at Excel. So those are just some things you can do um, if you're like me and you don't like to delete anything because you may need to come back to it, um, creating these little folders for your emails to categorize them, whatever makes sense to you. Um, so this is my agent services one. So this may look a little different for me than it would be for you. So I keep everything agent onboarding all ghost in one folder. Any agent question or email I get from an agent goes in this one. So just making those folders um, to make it the most sense for you. Anything luxury I get goes in this folder, so on and so forth. Um, so if I go down to more, I have a lot. Um, so there's different categories you can do and you just click create new label, name your label, and then you can nestle it within a, a label if you want to. So say if you wanted to do closed transactions and you wanna put any email towards a transaction in there and you can separate it by year, you can separate it by whatever makes the most sense to you. If you wanna do listing versus buyer, so you can kind of do a category within a category if you wanted. Um, so those are there for you. Again, you just put the name and click create. If you don't want it under any other label, it'll just show up on the side. So then you just click create and it pops up. And then you can also color coordinate them if a color system is um, for you. Um, you just click on the little three dots and you can change the label color. You can, I think you can change the color of the text as well. Um, but you can add a custom color if you wanna color outside of what's on this table here and you can also remove them. Uh, yeah. So you can do um, adjustments to them just by clicking on those three dots. Um, something that's really cool is Hangouts. So you can create um, like conversations I'll pull up Jonathan's, hopefully everything's okay in there. Um, and you can have like, to, it's like the AOL version of instant messenger that you can have conversations between people. So if you have an admin or even if it's whomever you wanna to talk to, as long as they have 
I believe as long as it's a Gmail, you can have that conversation between the two. Like as long as their emails Gmail or if it's another KW agent, obviously, because Jonathan is an agent. So you can use those conversations um, just as like an instant message and it will save everything previously. So almost like an instant message versus a physical email. So those are there um, if you didn't know. And then there is a way, um, again, you can um, ex access all your Google apps from here as well. I am gonna go ahead and switch into the drive. Um, so the Google drive is attached to your email. So when you log in, it's always gonna be um, a, a simulated with the same. And you know that by the picture in the corner, if you hover over it, it's gonna tell you the email. Um, so for spreadsheets, um, documents, Word documents, um, presentations, you can upload PDFs in here, you can upload images, pictures, um, all kinds of stuff that you can do within here. So if you wanted to create a new, you can create folders, which these are all folders, um, upload files or folders from your computer if you wanted to. So Google Docs is equivalent to like a Word document. Google Sheets is equivalent to Excel spreadsheet if you were previously a Microsoft user or anything like that. Um, Google Slides, same as a PowerPoint presentation. And then the Google Forms is like a form um, that you would list questions and stuff like that. Um, there is some more down here, drawings, maps, sites, app scripts, and Jamboard. I haven't done a lot or if anything with any of these. Um, so I don't have a lot of experience with them, but the way I feel with the drive that it's beneficial to use versus um, using like Word or something like that. One, again, it's free. Two, you can access it anywhere. Um, you have the option to download Google apps on your phone. Like I have the Google Drive app and the Google Calendar app on my phone. So I can see my work stuff from anywhere, whether I'm on my phone, on a laptop, I could be in my grandmother's house in Arizona and I have access to that information. So as an agent, you're always on the go. So I feel like this is a huge benefit for you where you have access to this information at all times when you need it. Um, so creating different things in here, um, if you have, if you wanted to like have a backup spreadsheet of your contacts, say heaven forbid command would be down or something wouldn't be working right and you need to call somebody, you could put that contact spreadsheet in here um, and you can literally export it from command in a spreadsheet and attach it into as a file in, in the drive and then you always have access to it. Now if you add people or take them away you would have to update that that wouldn't happen automatically but if so facto you have a backup system just in case. If you don't use the reporting or anything like that in command to keep track of your business and stuff like that. You can create spreadsheets in here. Um, that spreadsheet that Susan Whitaker shared with us um, after the buyer mastermind, Katie, um, you could put it in your Google Drive and you have it on the fly all the time. So if you were in a buyer presentation, you're like, oh, hey, by the way, um, we can see what we can do with your money right then and there. Um, or you can share it with them and pull it up on their computer if they, you know, if they want to do it in their own time. So it just gives you that full accessibility to be anywhere. And it doesn't matter if you have an Android or an iPhone or a Google phone, you have access to these apps because I have an iPhone and I have them all on there. So um, yeah, so you have full um, and you can search up at the top for um, whatever you think the name of it is. So I don't even know what to put up here, but I'll do Dave Jinks since he's on here. So it'll also it'll search for people, um, and then it'll also search for anything that has their name in it. So this regional newsletter has it in there, and then this is the Dave Jinks video um, that's right here. That's why that pops up. But so you have the ease of access because if you're like me, you can't remember what you named it. Um, so you put in words <laughs> and you can eventually find it. Um, so that's one of my favorite tools to use. Um, and then, which I think the biggest 
biggest focus um, for an agent is the calendar. So you are taught and burned in your brain um, from the get-go to if it's not on your schedule, it doesn't, it doesn't happen. Um, so using a Google calendar that is also attached to your drive, that is also attached to your email, makes again everything more cohesive and easier to access, easier to remember. So you can invite other people to these um, calendar events that or anything that you schedule on here. So you make sure that they are in the know. So if you scheduled a meeting with another agent or a client, you can invite them whether they have Gmail or not. And then if they accept it, there's a little check mark next to them. So you know for sure that they received it and they marked yes that they're coming. If they um, do no, then it'll be a red X. And if they choose maybe, it'll be like a gray question mark. Um, and then if they don't respond to there, then there just won't be anything next to the name, but it will show you who you have invited. But if you wanted to, so I'll go in just to edit this one. Um, so you, when you schedule something, this is what it looks like. There is like an all day option. If it was like an all day event, um, you can do um, repeating. So if you're setting up your schedule, so lead gen every day from nine to 11, um, you can put this daily. You can make this a weekly thing every month on the third Wednesday, annually on that year. I mean, there's so you can set this up to be cohesive across the board. So you don't have to put in lead gen every single day. You put it in once and put daily and it'll be there every day from nine to 11 on your schedule till the end of time. Or you can set it up, you know, reminder for the office meeting. It's the third Wednesday of the month um, or third Thursday of the month if you're at Cap, Cap Partners or third Wednesday if you're at Excel. Um, so just using these tools to better make your life easier because once it's on your schedule again pull it up on your phone no matter where you're at um, and you can see what time you're available for or not um, and then you can even go down to custom here and make it repeat on certain days like right now I have my son's baseball practice schedule and games on my schedule so obviously that doesn't happen the same day every week but I have it set up to Monday Wednesday practice and then I just added the games in there um, but you do have full range to help this repeat with you. That way you don't have to do every single individual thing at each time. So if you wanted to make it a Google Meet or make it a Zoom meeting, it will. Um, you can connect your accounts to do that. Um, once you click on it, make it a Zoom meeting, it'll ask for permission to your Zoom account, you'll log in, so on and so forth. You can add locations, you can physically type in an address or and like associate that, that way your contact knows exactly where they're going, or you can just put, um, you know, you can just free text it. So something like this between, like when I do um, invites for our career development at Cat Partners, I'll put like uh, the vision room or whichever meeting room that we're in, even though that may not be a physical place on Google, it makes sense to them. So you can put like, you know, if you're meeting another agent or meeting um, like a family member, even somewhere that makes sense to you, you can free type in there too. So it doesn't have to be a physical address. Um, so you can do that. Um, you can set up notification systems that'll go on your phone and or on your computer, um, depending on where you're logged into that at. Um, you can change the time frame of however minutes or hours notification before you want. If you want multiple notifications, you can add that. Um, you can add this to multiple um, calendars, depending on whose calendar you have access to. So if you are an admin or if you are on a team and um, you needed to add this event to somebody else's calendar, you can do that. Um, and then you can color code them based on whatever makes sense to you how I do it for like all my trainings that I am responsible for are in red. Um, any appointments, recruit appointments, which I know this is not the same for an agent, but just to kind of give you a, a backstory of how mine go. Um, anything that is um, somebody else's meeting, but I need to prep for that recruit appointment or anything is in orange. The light green is anything that's happening in person. So if I'm meeting with 
right here, I'm meeting with our team leader. So I made it green, light green. So I know this is an in-person event. Um, and then anything purple is just like needs to do. So if I need to start a smart plan for something, or if I need to finish something by a deadline, that's what, so whatever color code system makes sense to you, if you prefer to do that, um, you can. And then your availability, you can, you can block it as busy, you can block it as free, like as in free time, um, or you can make it public or private. If you have a Calendly or use something like Calendly, it goes off of your um, Gmail calendar. Um, so if you use something like that, if you've ever scheduled an appointment, personal appointment with me, um, it will look at my calendar for me and give you those availability slots based on that. Um, so as you can see, like here, like random things, um, blue, these are just meetings. Um, this is an in-person for me. Um, I do lunch coverage for the front desk. So that's that peachy color. I'm teaching opportunities at one o'clock. So it's red. So those stand out to me. Um, and then just again, baseball calendar, the kids like it's all there. So um, I know green is in person and then I know red is that and then just random stuff. Um, for reminders I use for purple. So this is, is always calendarly free or do you have to pay for that? Is that a paid service? Um, I think there's a free option. I'm almost positive that it's a free. There's a paid version and a free version. Um, so if you ever want to do like consulting um, or something like that and you want to allow your clients to just um, schedule on their own, you can set the parameters through Calendly, absolutely. Okay, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let me see here. Um, so you can filter the week, um, day, week, month, year. Um, so if you wanna overview the month, if you have more things, obviously you're not gonna be able to see them. Um, but let me go back to the week. I just per like to see the week so I can see what's coming. Um, but up here you can have like separate designations. So I'm covering for another MCTT for these days. Um, so I just put it up there so that way it's not interfering with my schedule, but I remember it. So like say I put it on the eight, eight o'clock slot every day, if somebody wanted to schedule it that early, they wouldn't be able to because it blocked my schedule. But up here, this is more of a reminder to yourself, um, but you would just click on it and do it that way. Um, I'll show you. So next Friday, I'll be out of the office. So you can kind of make, so when you click on these, you can make it event, out of the office, task or appointment slots. Um, so I just made it out of the office. That way it grays out the whole day and I don't have to go through and create blocks um, for everyone or for every hole in here. It's just completely grays it out. So if anybody like with a Calendly situation, if anybody has access to my schedule, they can't schedule that day. And then we don't have to do a bunch of extra work of rescheduling. So, um, and then, yeah. So you can, again, schedule it however you want. If you want it just showing up for the day, um, you can. So whatever you're comfortable with size wise, um, but you can, you know, you can go out as far as you want. You can schedule out as far as you want. And then you can click today to go right back to where you're at. Um, let's see. Um, and then I have access to other calendars. So you can invite if you get an admin or anything like that or have an admin or you want your ad um, anybody else to have access to your schedule, even if it's family members, um, you can um, give them access to do that. You would just click on the three dots next to um, the name of your calendar and do settings and sharing. And then you go back to um, add people under share with specific people, and then you can give them permission level. So they can see it um, only when you're free and busy. So they wouldn't be able to see what each block said. Um, is that event details, they'd be able to look at it, they'd click on it, any links or anything that are associated in it. Um, you can do that. They can have the option to make changes to events or make changes and manage sharing. So you give them different levels of permission that way. 
Um, and then you can change your calendar permissions and stuff like that through here as well. Um, but say you wanted to add a, um, like a link to a spreadsheet that is important for that meeting, you would just go into edit event. And then I'm gonna go back to hop back to my drive real quick. And I'm gonna um, get link. We'll just copy the, so every, any document in anything in the drive has a shareable link. Um, so you can use that and give different permission levels on that as well, but you can go back. So I get my link and I can just paste it right in here. So, and save it. So when I go to this calendar event, I can click on, which I'll save it real quick. Um, if you have somebody invited to or in a guest in this event, you can send it to them with any updates or you can hit don't send and it won't send it to them. So now when I click on this, I can click right here and I have that, that slide right, that, right there for you. Um, so that's just another way to make everything ease of purpose. Um, if there's a website you wanted to show somebody, you could put it in there. If there's any notes you need to remember, you can put it in there um, and it's all right there for you. Um, so just to, just kind of keeps everything together, group it all. Um, if you need to delete the event, you can. If you want to email your guests, you can. If it needs to say anything, um, you can print it, duplicate it, copy it to other, um, publish it, change the owner of the event if you need to. So there's a lot of stuff that you can do within the calendar other than just schedule stuff. Um, but for organization purposes and on the go purposes, I feel like Google has a lot of tools um, that really can benefit agents and their and their sanity at this, especially with the market the way it is right now. So yeah, so those are just the basics. Um, I'd be happy if you guys want a little more in-depth of training on some of these, um, but I just kind of wanted to go over the basic schemes of what was there, just so you know, and um, do you have any questions? No, thank you. Awesome, my pleasure. All right, well, I will let you ladies go. I apologize that I was late, um, but this will be recorded. So if you wanna look back on it, you absolutely can. It'll be on both uh, Market Center YouTube channels. And I hope you both have a good day. Bye.